Good morning. I have an unusual question I want to ask you right now. Have you ever had the wind knocked out of you? If you have in your life, I'm guessing that you never forgot it. The first, I think the only time I've had the wind knocked out in my life was about 10, I was about 10 years old. I was sledding on a hill across the street from our home. I was sledding on my stomach on a toboggan when I got the wind knocked out of me. And I remember staggering towards home thinking I was going to die as I struggled to regain my breath. Now why do I say that? Because when we get to our gospel lesson this morning, when we read the very first sentence, when you hear the very first sentence of our gospel lesson, Jesus has the wind knocked out of him. Jesus is staggering towards his own death. We have to keep that in mind as we prepare to worship. I invite you to rise as we begin this service. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. I invite you to kneel as you're able.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. How can we begin to thank you for your countless blessings? Let us praise you all of our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. first reading is from Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. God. Our second reading is from Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs. And from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went to shore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise have you ever, have you ever in your life gone to the cupboards only to find them there? Have you ever, ever gone to your refrigerator and opened it up just to make sure and there was nothing there? Have you ever, ever been in a situation where you didn't even have a dime or a nickel in your pocket or your purse? For the most part, for the most part, thank God this is true, for the most part, we can take our daily bread for granted. But sometimes something happens in our life when we can no longer do that. That happened for Elaine and me back in the summer of 1993. We moved to the Twin Cities that summer so I could attend Concordia College. I was preparing to enter the DCO program. And as summer gave way to fall, our bank account began to drain. I went back to school and Elaine took a job with a temporary agency. But you know what that means? No benefits, no vacation, no holiday pay, nothing. We didn't have insurance. We had no health insurance for that, what, first six, seven, eight months. And Jenny was only a year old. So we had to bite down hard and we had to apply for medical assistance so at least Jenny could see the doctor. And as our bank account dwindled, something arrived in the mail from Norfolk, Nebraska, from a woman named Laura Kozad. Laura had been a member of the church where we belonged, where Jenny was baptized. Laura was a fellow student in a life life Bible class that we attended. She was also a working single mother. And I don't know what prompted her to do this except the Holy Spirit. She sent us a check for $100. And that was enough to make a grown man cry, that she would do that for us. So have you ever gone to the cupboards and found them there? Have you ever opened up the refrigerator and there was nothing there? Have you ever been in a situation in life where you don't even have a dime or a nickel in your pocket? I can remember going to visit Muriel Borchard late in her life. She didn't know that her days were numbered. But a question, a question was starting to gnaw away at her. She wondered if she was going to run out of money before she died. How was she going to pay for the assisted living center as her bank account dwindled away? And I can remember Evelyn Pika, who lived across the street, who died after turning 105. Can you imagine the cost? She had 24-hour, seven-day-a-week care. 
But even with a very good pension system and very good savings account, she ran out of money. And they had to sell the house. And she went into the Ramsey County Care Center. And I can remember the last time I went to visit her, she just gave up. She was lying in bed. She was dead a few days later. Have ever gone to the cupboards, but they were bare? Have you ever opened the refrigerator and there was nothing there? Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you didn't have a dime or a nickel in your pocket? We can thank God that most of the days, most of our lives, that's not been the case. If Naya Penny was here, she might be working this, this weekend. Naya Penny lived through that probably for days, weeks, months, maybe even years, when she was a refugee there in Ethiopia before she was able to come to America. So maybe now, now we're ready to once again hear our gospel lesson. When Jesus heard what had happened, the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew by a boat privately to a solitary place. And hearing of this, the crowd followed him on foot from the towns. And when Jesus looked and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. And as evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to the heavens, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. And then he gave them to the people. He gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. And they all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. And the number of those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting the women and the children. So when's the last time we truly thank God for our daily bread and all that is encompassed in that very short petition. Well, Martin Luther was one who thought long and hard about what exactly is it that we're praying when we ask God to give us our daily bread? And what will you and I be praying here in a few minutes from now when we ask God to once again give us our daily bread? Not tomorrow's bread, not September's bread, but today's bread. What does this mean? And Luther writes, God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. But what's meant by daily bread? Daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, money, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. When we're praying for our daily bread, we're praying for the kitchen sink. Everything that we need for this body and this life today. But it's oh so easy to take that for granted, isn't it? Until, until we open the cupboards and the cupboards are bare. We open the refrigerator and nothing is there. And when we don't have a dime or even a nickel in our pockets, God provides for you and for me. And I've been thinking long and hard for the last few years about what might just be my favorite Bible passage. 
You know, it's hard to settle on just one. But Psalm 16 sums it up for me these days. I said to the Lord, You are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I said to the Lord, You are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. Isn't that one of the reasons why we come back to worship every weekend, every Sunday? To say the very same thing that David said 3,000 years ago. I said to the Lord, You are my Lord. And apart from you, I have no good thing. I have no good thing here and now, and I have no good thing eternally. Apart from you, Lord, and your Son, Jesus Christ. As I think about what took place all those years ago in the wilderness, I think about Psalm, a Psalm 140, Psalm 104 to be exact. It's a reminder, God's people of old remind us who else eats their daily bread and how the good Lord, our Creator God, provides it as well. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. These all look to you to give them their food at the proper time. And when you give it to them, they gather it up. And when you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. And when you hide your face, they are terrified. And when you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. And when you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditations be pleasing to him. The birds of the air nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. And God waters the mountains from his upper chambers, and the earth is satisfied by the fruit of his works. He makes grass grow for the cattle, and plants for man to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth, wine that gladdens the hearts of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread that sustains his heart. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests, the stork has its home in the pine trees. The mountains belong to the wild goats. The crags are the refuge for the cronies. You bring darkness and it becomes night. And all the beasts of the forest prowl. And the lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises and they steal away. They return and lie down in their dens. And then man goes off to his work, to labor, until evening. So what do we do when we open the cupboards of their hair? What do we do? What do we do when we open the refrigerator and there's nothing there? And what do we do when we don't have a dime or a nickel in our pocket? Do we take, do we take our daily bread for granted? And that leads to another question that must be answered, asked and answered this morning. Do we take the living bread for granted too? Are we in danger of taking the bread of life for granted most of the time? Psalm 104, this beautiful, beautiful poetic description of how God not only creates the world, but how he sustains and provides and satisfies the desires of every living thing ends in a most unusual, breathtaking, shocking way. It ends with these words, this final verse of this truly magnificent psalm. But may sinners vanish from the earth, and the wicked be no more. But may sinners vanish from the earth, and the wicked be no more. That still takes my breath away. That's still like a punch in the gut. What on earth is this kind of a verse doing summing up such a seemingly wonderful psalm? Why? 
why did God's people add that petition at the end of their praise? Well, because the truth be told, the God honest truth be told, Scripture never rarely deviates from its central message, from beginning to end. That just as much as we need our daily bread, our even greater need is for daily forgiveness. Just as much as we need bread for the rest of our days, so we need God's forgiveness for all of our days, however many they may be. And that reminds us, that reminds us that you and I today, we're going to experience a far greater miracle than did those 5,000 men all those years ago, not counting the women and the children. Because today, this very day, this very morning, all across the metro area, all across the United States, all across North America, all across the what Western Hemisphere, all around our globe today, Jesus is feeding thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions. He's feeding them His body and blood. Take and eat. This is my body. Take and drink. This is my blood. And what did the disciples say? All we have, all we have to give to the crowds are what? Five fish and a couple of loaves of bread. And it might seem these days that all we have to offer one another and all we have to offer our neighbor are a few crumbs. All we have is a little bit of bread and a little bit of wine. But for those with the eyes of faith, we see so much more. We see God, the God who descended to earth, to the virgin's womb, the God who entered the waters of Jordan's stream, the God who hung on a cross, strung out between two sinners, the God who was buried in a tomb, the God whom death could not hold, is the God who comes to us today, is the God who comes to you and me today. And he hands us the bread and says, take and eat, this is my body. And he hands us the cup and he says, take and drink, this is my blood. May we not take our daily bread, and may we not take the bread from heaven for granted. In Jesus' name, amen. God, who exactly is the God we've come to worship this morning? He opens his hands and he satisfies the desires of all living things. And he opened his hand and he meets our deepest desire, the forgiveness of sins. So let us stand and rise as we join in confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed.
We confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified by the Lamb of the He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic the Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last scene. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. I invite you to kneel if you're able. O oh Lord, your word is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. May it always be a lamp to our feet and a light for our path. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, there is no God but you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Help us to fear, love, and trust you above all else. We pray this for all the baptized, including those who celebrate their new birth by water in the Word this week. Dawn, Elizabeth, Gwen, Jason, and Tammy. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, the nations are in turmoil, the, nick, the wicked seem to prosper. Help us to trust that you are in control and are working all things for the good of those who love you. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, the church is beset by many problems, both internal and external. Help us not to lose heart so that we do not forsake the communion of saints. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, what can we do amidst of all the anguish and need we see almost everywhere we turn? Fill us with your spirit so that we may live out our faith in these dark days. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O Lord, hear the cries of all who call on you, of all who call on you in truth. Help, save, comfort, and defend them, gracious Lord, including the family of Betty Buckland. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O Lord, our times are in your hands. Grant healing, consolation, and peace to the dying, the sick and the injured, including Paula, Gail, Pam, Brian, Pat, Jim, Jeannie, David, Cordero, Nancy, Kathy, Sylvia, Rita, Ben, Laura, Don, Nancy, Carol, Darlene, Dennis, Bonnie, Shirley, Liz, Marie, Rochelle, Larry, and Angela. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, comfort the Yang family as they grieve the death of Mao Zong. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, we have nothing to fear. For absolutely nothing can separate us from the love that is ours in Christ Jesus.
it is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you. O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may daily eat and drink the fruits of his cross, and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The one who fed the five thousand, not counting the women and the children, is the same one who feeds us here and now. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. I invite forward those who will be taking the sacrament to the sick and the homebound. And as they come forward, again, it's a reminder of what we might be tempted to take for granted. Most of our sick and judges, they get one opportunity to partake of their Lord's Supper a month. When either I or one of these assisting ministers brings them the sacrament. And you should see how they receive it what we tend to take for granted when we receive it so often. They remind me, planning on visiting Bonnie Schutte this afternoon, and we'll see that again in evidence. So let us pray. 
Eternal God, whose glory is revealed in the crucified and risen Lord, bless those who go forth to share your word and sacrament with our sisters and brothers who are sick or homebound. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those to whom we bring this communion in the body and blood of your Son, that we may all feast upon your abundant love made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Go in peace as you serve the Lord. Receive now the benediction of your Lord. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
and serve the Lord.